Hi everybody, this is Greg Koopman. Today I'm going to talk about a how to secure your Azure storage containers using shared access signatures and access policies. Okay, I had a little difficulty locating this information and that's why I'm making the video to make it easier for others. So hopefully this helps you. Okay, first of all, I'm going to go through a the goal of this video, which is based on a use case on a scenario. Uh, and it's a common use case uh, among many enterprise uh, ETL and data lake and data warehouse um, type environments. Basically, you're generally getting data from external entities. Okay, sometimes it's only a couple, sometimes it's thousands. Okay, and in this scenario, this example I've um, worked up, I have a company that uh, manages um, data from all from tennis centers, okay, and the tennis centers are all over the world, okay. So there might be there could be two thousand tennis centers that every day will load files or maybe like CSVs and this kind of thing up to the cloud. Uh, into their own container, all right? And each container, only they can get to it, they, only they can write to it, only they can read from it, okay? And they got to put their files there daily, all right? So how should we do this? How would, The question was, how would I uh, secure their access to those containers without allowing anyone else to access them? Okay, so... Figuring out how to access a storage account in Azure seems to be quite straightforward and quite easy. But accessing a container was I had it was a little different. It wasn't so straightforward at all, especially through the Azure portal. Okay, so I ended up using um, Azure Storage Explorer, and I was able to get all everything I needed there or not everything, but after creating the storage account, I could do everything else over in the uh, Azure Storage Explorer. So that's where we're gonna work from today. Okay, so let's go ahead. I have this little spreadsheet that we're going to do three different things. We're going to look at uh, London, London Tennis, and the, that's one uh, entity, external entity that I'm gonna allow, and they have a, their own container. So daily they, they upload files, and um, but they have different people in the office and some they want to give like full admin rights to it or full, and in their case, uh, you know, read, write, add, create, delete list uh, for that container. But some other people, they just want them to upload the, the um, files and there they, they create uh, permissions and list and um, then others, they want to be able to just check the data that's up there. And those, they just want to have read access. So I'm going to create all three of these. And we're going to create a shared access signature for them. But before we create a shared access signature for each of them, we need to create an access policy. Okay. And our policy names are going to be London Full, London Create, and London Read. All right. So let's go ahead over to Azure Storage Explorer and go ahead and get to work here. Okay, here I am in Azure uh, Explorer. And as you see, I have the I, um, storage account called Tennis Center Daily Dropbox. Okay, and in there I have represented um, six different tennis centers. Okay, and I just called them by their city name. Okay. So I have one Babylon, Fort Lauderdale, London, Miami, New York, and Paris. But we're only going to work with London. Okay, so we have a container for them. So every day they should, they're supposed to drop data uh, files into this container. What happens after that? I might take it. In, uh, my organization might go ahead and take that data, those data files, and load it through some ETL process and take them out of that container. And the next day they load their London will load their files again, and Babylon will load their files, and Fort Lauderdale will load their files. But none of them should be able to see the other's container or the files within those containers. Okay, so as I said before, so let's go ahead. We're going to create. The, we're going to do a few steps here. We're going to number one create the access policies. 
Number two, we're going to create the SAS tokens, which are the, the SAS URIs, which are is the um, shared access signatures. And number three, we're going to go ahead and then test them to see if those work. Okay, so when we create those those URIs, we need to save those because those are like the key to the key to the container, right? For these different operators in London. So we will save those in the spreadsheet. Okay, so that's what we're going to do, and let's go ahead and get started. So I come down to um, my storage account. I come into my containers, and I say London. And by the way, I'm using a blob container here, not a Gen 2. A Gen 2, in order to do what I'm doing here, um, I think you're going to, some of the steps you can just do um, easily through the UI, but others, like assigning the policy to the uh, SAS token, the SAS URI, I think it requires PowerShell. So I haven't done that yet, so I just selected to go ahead with the blob storage. Um, okay, so I, because I can do it all through the UI. So I'm in London. I'm going to go down to Ma Manage Access Policies. And here I'm going to create three different policies. Hit my Add button. I got three different policies. I'm going to call the first one Full. Which means I'll give it full, full per, all the permissions, which is going to be add, create, write, delete. Here you can set the start and end time. I'm just going to leave it alone. That's like a week. Um, this is a fictitious um, example, so there's no use to continue. But but basically, you could set this to years ahead of time, so it never, ex almost never expires, or at least maybe 25 years, whatever you want to do. The second one I'm going to set to create, which means, or let's call it upload. Okay. And when you upload, I'm going to take off read. I'm going to take leave create on because that's what you need when you upload. List. I need list always because otherwise I can't see what's in the directory, right? Can't see if my create worked or if I, I even in the right place. So I need lists for all of them. And lastly, I'm going to create read only, where the user can only read the files, but can't write to them, can't um, upload files, can't delete files, right? So this one's set to read and list. So that's all looks good. So all those are my three policies, and I'm going to save them. Okay, now I come back to the same, to London, and I right click and I say generate or rather get shared access signature. So my first access policy that I apply is the full. And it already knows what the permissions are and it lists them here. So I say create under full and it, it generates a, a brand new URI, okay? And in the URI, it gives us some, uh, some sort of token that it creates, some unique key that is appended to the, in the URI. So I'm gonna copy the whole URI, and for now I'm just going to copy it over to here into my spreadsheet. I'm going to save this spreadsheet, or I need to save this somewhere because what happens if I give them, I need to be able to, I might have 2,000 um, different tennis centers, so I'm going to have, that would mean if I have three for each, I have 6,000 unique shared access signature URIs, and um, I'm going to have to distribute those to the different these different uh, centers so I need to save, save them somewhere so I'm going to save them right here okay so there's my London full which was just generated now we're going to go back to my actually I'm going to just go back and I'm going to change it to London upload and now I'm going to create a new one so I'm going to assume that's a brand new one which is going to work fine because this doesn't have a save button it automatically generates it so it's good um, copy that here. Otherwise, I, if I close it, I have to come back right in. So, if I look here, London upload. Yeah, that's a that's unique, right? That's London full, and that's different. Yes, they're different. Okay, so that looks like it's going to work fine. And so I just go back a button, go London read, and now I got my read right. So I'm gonna create, I'm gonna copy that URI, I'm gonna paste it right in here. Very good. Okay, so I'm going to save my spreadsheet here for 
posterity. How do I know it works or not? I mean, I'm in that storage account, and if I pull in anything there, that's that's using my user credential, when, which I have full rights, and I can do anything I want. So how do I test this? Okay, I don't want to create a whole program to test this and everything else. So what we do is we're going to copy this um, URI right here, and I come back over here and close that up. And you come back to your Explorer here, your um, Azure Storage Explorer, and you come out of this area where your subscriptions are, and you come up to Local and Attached, right? Okay, and that's not a singles place. All right, so anyways, this is... Um, so there's nothing in here right now. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and, and go connect to Azure Storage. And this is where you really can test it. So here I'm going to say use a shared access signature. Well, I got three of those right now, right? So I click on that, select that. I say next. And I already copied the one that has full permissions. So I'm just going to paste it in here. And I'm going to change the display name just so it says full. Okay, so now I say next, and it says you trust this guy. I do connect, and if I look over here, now it's over on my left side. Okay, and here's the uh, panel to show me what's in there, which is nothing. So now let's add the other two while we're at it. Connect, you shared, next. I need to go back over to my spreadsheet. Paste. I'm going to call that upload. Next, connect. Now I got the upload over here. And one more. We're going to do the read only. Shared signature. Next. Oops, I don't have it right now, so let me go to Excel. Copy. Paste. And this is read really read only okay next connect okay so let me get rid of these up here real quick so here I am and I have load full I think it gives me all the permissions to do anything I want so I should be able to upload some files into this container right now okay I'm gonna upload some files I'm gonna upload I'm gonna upload the sales file upload no problem here it comes, and I have permissions to do that. And there it is. I'm gonna upload one more thing. And this time I'll upload, I'm not gonna upload a folder directly. I'm gonna upload a file called lessons. But I'm gonna call it, I'm gonna put it into a, a folder just so you can see if that you can do this sort of thing. Really, you're gonna be very structured about the way things are done. But that's gonna create me a, a, a directory, I guess, a folder. And um, that's going to then have the lessons in it. Okay, so here you see London download. And then go up one, and there we are. All right. So now let's go ahead and go back. And this has delete permissions too. So I'm going to come over here. I'm going to highlight this and hit delete because I made a mistake. I don't want that folder in there. So delete. And does it have rights? It should have rights because it has full rights. So now I've deleted it, right? So now I'm back to London. You don't see the directory, but you still see this guy, which I'm gonna leave in there. Okay, so that's our full, now I've tested my full rights. I didn't test every single thing, okay? If I wanna test read, I could double click on this. Oh, I double, yeah, I double clicked. Are you sure you wanna open it? And this is how Explorer does its read. And it shows me what's in there, okay? I'm gonna just close that. Actually, I'm going to change the number from 500 to 700. This is where you have your write permission comes in, which is part of my full rights. I'm going to say save. Okay, and what it's going to do then is save it, and I exit this, and it gives me a dialog that says file changes were detected because it saw me change it to 700. I could ignore it. I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and upload it again, which means just apply those changes so now my 500 changed to 700 okay very good okay so now let's go to my read okay 
in this case we can go to read we're going to skip upload for now and if we go to read and i double click on this guy which it should open because it has read permissions now it's going to open it should open and we should see the 700 not the 500. there it is 700 so it let me change it up in the full permissions and let me read it in the read in the read um now let's see if i can delete it now according to the read to your eye i didn't give it delete the ability to delete so if i delete let's see if it lets me delete well I'm in that. So it asked me to delete. It's trying to delete, and you see it gives me an error. So it couldn't delete it because it doesn't have permissions to delete it. Okay, it doesn't have permissions to create a file either. So let's see if I can upload files. I shouldn't be able to. Okay, so I'm going to upload memberships, upload. It's trying to upload it now, and it fails. Can't upload because it doesn't have permissions to upload right okay so that's read okay just as we expected it works right so and as upload we're going to be able to create a it should be able to bring in another file right so I'm gonna click on upload files I go to a file and now I'm gonna to go to lessons and I go to upload and it's try up oh it failed why did it fail because i had the create permission available i had the list to show me what's going on so why did it fail well i had worked through this before but i wanted to show you this but um basically when you upload you need to also have the read read permission in there as you upload okay i'm not exactly sure why they have to have the read but there you do something internally you got to read it to be able to write it i'm not sure but anyways if i go back to manage so i'm going to go back to manage my access policies and where i have london upload i'm going to add a checkbox for read and i'm going to save it now the question is if i change it like that do i have to recreate the uri and the answer is no you don't have to recreate the ui which makes it very convenient so if someone calls you up and said yeah you made a mistake you didn't give me this or that and you have to give them an extra permission or take away some permissions you can do it here without having to resend them a uri so i'm going to hit save now it has that read which will allow me now to i'm going to go back up there to the upload right and now I'm going to try to upload the file. And it's going to allow me to upload this file, pretty sure. So now it's trying. Because I needed that combination. So now it uploaded properly. Great. So I'm in the upload, which allows me to create and read. But will it let me delete? Well, I didn't let the I didn't allow it to delete before. So I'm going to go ahead and try to delete what I just put in there. It's trying and the delete failed really quick. Okay, so as you see, it works pretty well. Okay, it's if you do it from this Microsoft Azure Stores Explorer. If you do it over in the portal, it's a little, it's harder and you have to look for some other things. So I would do yourself a favor and just do it in this, um, in this uh, Storage Explorer. So I hope you like this video and I hope you learned something. Thanks a lot.